ASIP VIDEOS Hey guys, ASIP here and welcome to yet another tutorial. Um, once I finish uploading this, uh, after rendering of course, I am just 9 videos away from the uh, 100 video milestone, so uh, I just wanted to mention that quickly. Um, so this is JavaScript tutorial number 11. Um, in this tutorial we're just going to be covering um, its events, JavaScript events. Um, so, I mean, I'll spend some time explaining it, but it's fairly self-explanatory. What is an event? Um, an event is when something happens. Um, and we can't, we can't, uh, we can't do something for every event. Although we can do something for pretty much every event, but um, you have keywords, okay? And um, I realize I haven't been describing this very well uh, so far. But basically, um, this is an event, okay? Uh, so we've got a form. Basically, uh, I should probably tell you about this quickly. Uh, basic HTML setup with the script tags. I'll go through the code uh, once we require it, uh, and we're just going to make a form. Uh, you don't have to. Oh, actually, you do need an ID. You don't actually need a name, but generally. Uh, what I find is if I put in an ID, I'll put in a name, or if I put in a name, I'll put in an ID. Because um, sometimes you need one or the other for different uh, methods of retrieving info. Uh, so anyway, in the form tag, we have uh, a JavaScript event, and that is the on submit event. And what's going to happen is, on submitting, upon the, uh, uh, the click of the submit button, it's going to execute whatever's in between these two um, quotes, and that is return check form. Uh, so basically, it wants to return the value. It wants to retrieve the value. Sorry, from check form, and check form can only be a function in the JavaScript code. Uh, and here we have a function check form. It takes no arguments. All it does is it checks all the stuff in the form. Uh, so before we actually cover um, the check form function, we should probably cover what's in the form. We've got a first name, that's input type text, uh, and always you should give these names and IDs, so uh, exactly the same name and ID by the way as well. Uh, so the name I put is first name, and of course it's the same for the ID. And then another text box, that's last name. Uh, then I've got two radio buttons, uh, yes and no radio buttons. Now these have names and IDs, as well as a value, because what you do is when you have radio buttons, uh, they can be, um, they obviously, uh, it's a different, uh, uh, you know, as many as you want, here I've got two for example, so two options uh, in a certain category here, and in this case the category is siblings, and the two options are yes or no, so you have to provide both um, a name name slash id and a value if you just put the value then uh, when we retrieve this data we won't know what we're saying yes to it will just show up yes okay so that would be kind of confusing in for instance uh, I don't know some type of form um, if we just put the name then it's gonna say siblings but it's not actually gonna give us the answer whether we said yes or no so you gotta have both of those so I've got two radio buttons, both with those things. The only thing that's different in them is the value. So one is yes, excuse me, and one is no. Um, and finally, almost finally actually, we have uh, a list box and that's the select tag. Um, so name and ID again, age. Um, and here, we don't put the value in the select thingy, but we put it in the option. So we just have to type the option tag out again, and then we put the value of this option uh, as an attribute in the option tag. So uh, here I've got none. I'll show you why I've actually got this thing uh, here in the first place soon, in one second, uh, when I run through the form. But for now we've got the age groups of 7 to 11, 12 to 16, 17 to 21, and 22 plus. Um, second to last we've got a button which I'm going to explain later. Uh, and finally, we have the submit button. Okay. Um, now, bearing in mind, you could, rather than having an on, on submit in the form, 
you could uh, have an on click function uh, in the submit button, like so. That's a valid JavaScript event, the on click event. Uh, but I think that uh, doesn't the outcome of that doesn't actually stop the submitting of the, of the form or not, which is actually what we want to end up doing, ultimately. Anyway, let's move on to the function. Uh, so basically, this is checking if the user has filled in everything and if you've, if he's uh, filled in everything correctly, etc. Um, and basically, what we're just going to do is we're going to type if, and then two parentheses for the if, um, and we're going to type document dot get element by id, and then single quotes dot value dot length equals equals zero, and this the thing in between the single quotes is a first name. So what this is actually telling JavaScript to do is search in the function an element which is id'd as first name. Okay, so it's telling it to look for uh, an element in the func in the document which is id'd uh, as first name. And that's why it's important to have both the name and the ID in there. Because if we didn't have an ID, we only had the name. Getting the element by ID here wouldn't work, because there wasn't no ID. Um, if that is the case, in fact, I haven't actually typed this out yet, but uh, there is an alternative way to do this. We can type document. Dot, uh, and if we want to do this, uh, bearing in mind, uh, it's the same to start with. We've got to type document. Dot but if we want to do this way then the form has to have uh, a names or id okay that's crucial in this in this way uh so we just got to type document so now it knows it's looking inside the actual document that is everything between the body tags and then after document we've got to type the form name and that's why we need the name of the form so the form name in this case is one so document dot form one dot um uh, and then the uh, the input type or the um, the select actually yeah uh, basically whatever element inside that form we want to check the value of uh, so in this case we want to check the value of the first name so we need to look for the name of the uh, first name input type and that is first name so document dot one dot first name oops capital N and then uh, we can proceed as usual. It's dot value dot length equals equals zero. Oops. So basically, what this shows is this using the get element by ID uh, is exactly the same as typing the form name and then the uh, the input name. Uh, I just think that th this way seems quicker to me. It just feels quicker to be honest. Um, now, actually, I said you need a form name. But you don't actually. Alternatively, 